good evening! Oh man, it is so great to be back here in Poland. It's been a long fucking time. We have a new, ac new record out called United Abominations. We're gonna play some music off of that. We've got some old songs we're gonna play for you too tonight. We're gonna try and do as much as we can. I'm not gonna talk a lot. I'm just gonna play. This song is called Washington is Next.
you so much. This next number we're going to play for you is for those of you that like to play video games. This is a song that's about cutting people in half with chainsaws and smashing their heads in with sledgehammers and stuff like that. The song is called Gears of War. I had no idea 
This next song that we're going to do for you is a song about an epidemic in the United States of America. There's a drug in America that some people think is like cocaine. It's called crystal methamphetamine. It makes your teeth fall out. It makes your face all scabby. And people think it's fucking cool. And it ain't. This song is called Burnt Ice. Wonder, I'm on the door to make the 
Gadev uh, celebrates 25th anniversary. When you are looking at this 25 years, uh, is there anything uh, you regret you didn't do? Did I regret? No. <laughs> no. That, that I didn't do? No. I've done everything I want to do. I mean, I'd like to meet Robert Plant, but you know, shit, I just went to go see Led Zeppelin in London a couple months ago, so I got what I want. I have everything I want. If someone asks you to imagine the next 25 years of uh, Megadeth, what would you say to him? It'll probably get slower. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of uh, uh, records uh, made by Megadeth uh, went uh, into the history of uh, metal music. Uh, how does it feel? I guess it feels good. Uh, you know, it, it, it all depends. There's been a lot of records that have gone into metal history, you know, they're historical records that suck, you know, and, and there's, there's records that are in metal history for having great album covers, you know. I, I mean, how many album covers have we voted number one just because it had a nun with her tits out, <laughs> you know? I mean, how many times have you, have you gone into a record store when you were a kid and you went into the metal section and you'd see bands like Witchfinder General or Angel Witch and they'd be in a, in a a mortuary and you know how come we, uh, where, where are all these topless nuns you know as far as uh, for me with uh, having music that that has stood the test of time um, I think a lot of that is just just being honest about who I am and the music that I like uh, you know I, I don't listen to a lot of metal bands because I, I, my influences are different it comes out in my music um, the byproduct of what I listen to is is metal um, if I listen to metal, it'd be kind of going backwards, you know what I mean? Because I draw my, my inspiration from everything from Motown to the Beatles to Led Zeppelin to, you know, two of my favorite guitar players are, are in new wave of British heavy metal bands. I think that, that's the point, because uh, in spite of uh, good uh, covers of your records, uh, they are defending with uh, good music. Yeah, no tits. <laughs> <laughs> no tits. Uh, if you have to choose uh, a favorite one, what would it be? Favorite Megadeth record? Mm-hmm. Megadeth cover or record? Megadeth uh, record. Megadeth uh, re record uh, concerning the music. Um, well, I, it, it's, it's hard to say because it's kind of like you know, being on a sinking ship and, and only having enough life rafts for one child and you've got ten. You know, <laughs> it's it's hard to say. And, and frankly, you know, in, including our new record. Um, it, it, it's pretty dumb not to say my new record's the best because you know you want to take opportunities to sell your product. But I think as far as like technically, uh, Rust in Peace was uh, um, a record that really changed a lot of people's lives. Peace Sells was a record that um, really blew the heavy metal marketplace open in the states. Countdown to Extinction was a huge commercial success in the states for metal. And um, I, I think between those three records and United Abominations, um, you know, you, you pretty much can listen to those four records and get an understanding of what the band's been like for the last 25 years. Now, we tried to put a sampling of all that into War Chest because War Chest is something that it shows with some of the different lineups were. It shows different songs uh, uh, by different lineups and stuff like that. You know, and people have said stuff like, well, God, you've had so many lineup changes. It's like, no shit. You know what? The first two guys were junkies and they used to steal our gear for heroin. You're fired. The second guy, the drummer, was Chuck Beeler, who was a crack addict. And Jeff Young tried to sleep with my fiance. You're both gone. And then Nick Menzel lies about having cancer. You don't lie about that shit. You just don't. So, I mean, the bottom line is, is that most of the people that aren't here aren't here for a reason. If you had a guy that stole your stuff and tried to bone your old lady and lied about having cancer in your band, uh, either, you know, uh, he's in there because he's a drug dealer and he's giving you stuff for free, or he's your, you know, like your little brother or something, you have to babysit him. You know, I mean, that, that, that's the kind of stuff that you just, you can't expect to be functional. You can't expect to you know, be successful when you've got that kind of stuff going on because when four people play music together, that's as close as you'll ever get without you know, swapping blood with one another. You know? And when you find out somebody's tried to sleep with your woman or, or you know, uh, steal your stuff, nah, that's not cool. So, you know, we've gone through some things. We've had two guys that have left the band. One, Marty left because he wanted to play J-pop, and it was better to find out that he wanted to play J-pop instead of him continuing to drag the band down because the uh, reason that risk is how it was, Marty wanted to be in an alternative band, and I, and I tried as best as I can to 
make the band have some tranquil, you know, domestic tranquility, some harmony. But uh, after Risk was done, I said, Marty, we need to go back to our roots, and that's when he quit because he wanted to. He wanted to go even farther alternative, and it's like, dude, no way. There's just there's no way. So after Risk is when we t made the big turnaround, and I started to realize that I pretty much lost my way. I was I was bending over backward for the wrong reasons, and I and I want to play metal guitar. You know, I don't care about being successful on, on on the radio or with MTV because it doesn't really it, it doesn't translate when you try to be successful. If you're true to yourself and you are successful, that's fantastic. You know, but for me to try to, to guess what the fans of MTV or what radio listens to, it's a losing game. So, you know, I, I, that's the beauty of when you are successful, you get to, to kind of go like, are you kidding? Because we just won five awards in Japan, and uh, I, we were second runner-up on two other ones. You know, and this is with one of the biggest magazines, the biggest metal institution in Japan is Burn Magazine and, and uh, Masito's radio programs and stuff, and, you know, we won everything. So, pretty excited about that. 25 years later, would I think I'd still be here? I thought I'd be dead by now, to tell you the truth. I thought I would have OD'd and died. I did OD, I did die, but I didn't stay dead. Listening to you, I think that the, the point of this is that uh, every re record that was uh, re recorded uh, from the heart is the good one. I think so. If you if you're if you're doing anything, I mean, music is kind of like for somebody who who is a painter or or a chef or or somebody who's even a mechanic, you know, that that does something. If you take pride in what you do, you know, you, you're gonna uh, really find enjoyment at the end of the day. When when you know you look at a lot of people that are really lazy with what they do, it shows up in their work. I'm really dedicated to what I do. I'm 46. Um, I don't feel 46. I don't look 46, and and I don't play 46. So when I get out there tonight, um, my dedication to the fans and wanting to take care of myself. Now, granted, I've partied enough on the inside. I'm probably 460, <laughs> but on the outside, you know, I feel great. I'm, I feel alive, and I want to go play.